Right, amateur radio is full of um, misinformation and misconceptions, um, almost myths, if you like, that have uh, cropped up over the years. And uh, one of them which I want to look at is uh, the NFED half-wave. Um, I've, in the past, I've previously said this. There's a bit of debate over counterpoises. Um, a lot of people say you don't need a counterpoise for a half-wave, which... Uh, may be true if you're running uh, QRP because there's so little power it doesn't matter but if you don't have a counterpoise what will actually happen is the uh, feeder cable will use the outer sheath so your feeder cable will effectively become your counterpoise. Now I've been looking at this book which uh, is called Low Band DXing by ON4UN. Now this guy he knows his stuff. Um, he's been a DXer for years, he's literally written the book on it, and this book is considered a bit of an authority on antennas. And um, I was reading the section on uh, voltage fed antennas, including N fed half waves, and he says this A terrible misconception about voltage fed verticals is that they do not require either a good ground or an extensive radial system which contradicts what I've said in the past about these. So I'm wondering if I've got it wrong. Now, talking specifically about the near field here, he goes on to say, if you measure the current going into the ground at a base of a halfway vertical, the current, <coughs> sorry, the current will be very low, theoretically zero. Yes, agreed, I know, we know that. Uh, with a quarter wave and shorter verticals, the current in the radials increases in value as you get closer to the base of the vertical. That's why for a given amount the radial wire uh, so that's why for a given amount of radial wire it's better to use many short radials than just a few long ones. Again I would have agreed with that. He then goes on to talk about voltage fed antennas which would include the N fed half wave. He says with voltage fed antennas uh, the current will increase as you move away from the vertical. It then gives a reference of Brown. I, I don't know who that is. I haven't looked that up. Um, but apparently it was calculated that the highest current density exists at approximately 0.35 wavelength from the base of the voltage fed half wave vertical. Therefore, it is even more important to have a good radial system with a voltage fed antenna such as a voltage fed T or a half wave vertical. These radials, uh, these verticals require longer radials to do their job efficiently compared to current fed verticals. I've always thought that a half wave vertical didn't need um, much of a ground system. And that seems to be the uh, information that you routinely find on the internet forums. But I was reading a book um, a while back and um, I would you know it's a book I'd say was a fairly reliable source it's a bit of an authority on antennas and they said you need you actually do need a decent ground system for an NFED half wave um, so I've got here the setup that I used when I was on holiday in Wales so here I've got um, my uh, 12 meter tall mast um, just a wire goes all the way up to the top way up there I don't know how well you can see that on camera and um, feeding it through a 49 to 1 um, transformer and uh, the earth is just connected to a short spike here and uh, counterpoise goes out I don't know roughly about a meter um, the feed point here just goes into this uh, green box it's RG58 and uh, connects into this nice thick cable which is uh, Formula Zero, basically equivalent to Westlex 103, goes into the ground, underground, all the way over to the car over there. So the idea here is I'm going to uh, do about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes on a whisper test with just this setup. So that is the only ground it's got, this uh, ground spike here and uh, the counterpoise. That's the only ground connected. Give it about 15, 20 minutes like that, see how it uh, forms and then uh, I'm going to come back I'll disconnect 
um, the earth here and take this uh, spike and counterpoise out and I'm going to connect it into uh, this earth rod here via this thick cable and um, that is connected to my ground radial system for uh, 80 meter quarter wave vertical so that is a pretty decent uh, radial system uh, I forget exactly how many radials it is I think it's uh, I think it's about 40 radials with uh, about 10 15 meters on each radial so it's it's fairly substantial ground so uh, I'll change it over onto that system then do a second whisper test and we'll do a comparison between the two what it's hard work this YouTube stuff what do you think I'm doing whilst it's uh, running whisper for half hour in all fairness I am uh, I'm checking the uh, progress online on my phone see so I'm working okay that's the uh, first test complete so I'm going to uh, disconnect my uh, uh, little mini radial here with the short ground rod Let's, uh, take that off I'm going to put my uh, big ground radial system on now for the 80 meter quarter wave and um, we're running this uh, sort of late afternoon I guess so uh, I started uh, the first test at quarter to three and we're now quarter past three so it's had half hour so there we go just uh, nip that up nice and tight so we get a good connection and I can pull that ground rod out now Ooh. there we go so we've uh, now got this ground rod which uh, the main ground rod here which um, is about I think it's about two meters long maybe three meters long so it's quite a long ground rod and uh, also the big radial system as well for the 80 meter quarter wave so uh, I'm going to uh, run the system for half hour and whisper with this configuration and uh, then we'll compare the results and see if there's any difference okay so I'm back at home had a chance to uh, have a look at the whisper results and uh, I'll edit these in when I uh, edit the video but uh, you can see on my two screens here I've got the two whisper plots side by side uh, this one on my left is uh, without the radial system connected and this one on the right is with the radial system connected now at first glance looking at these two um, screens side by side I actually can't see an awful lot of difference um, the one difference that does stand out is uh, with the uh, decent ground radial system I picked up a station from Australia he he didn't hear me but I heard him now what you've got to remember is this isn't particularly scientific because uh, I didn't run both plots side by side so I did one plot after the other so these plots were actually taken sort of over a period of uh, about an hour hour and 15 minutes hour and 20 minutes so the um, propagation could change quite drastically in that time so it's it's not the most scientific approach now I have also checked you can uh, go on the website and it'll give you a list of all the stations you've received with the actual signal strength and uh, i've done that for both aerials and again there are differences but you know some stations are better on one setup some stations are better on the other so the propagation will have changed too much in that time to draw a scientific conclusion it doesn't favor one way or the other so I'm not too sure what to make of this. I mean, uh, I've always thought and always been told that uh, this book is uh, a bit of an authority on antennas and I don't want to sit here and uh, slag it off on eBay because I believe it's a very good book. I'm, I'm left wondering if uh, maybe I've misinterpreted or misunderstood what was being said in the book. But uh, if I've interpreted what's in the book, book right my results don't tie up with what the book says I should be getting so I don't know it, interesting experiment but to me the additional radios and additional ground didn't seem to make a lot of difference so I don't know you tell me what you think in the uh, in the comments below